Here we're going to be looking at the response to some bloggers in regards to the Snyder Cut being announced. And this is very interesting as it reminds me of what happened back in the day with Bioware and Mass Effect 3's ending with the release of the Extended Cut. Now, the difference is the Extended Cut was an outcry from fans who didn't like the ending because it was horrible and still was. And if you actually paid attention, the Extended Cut made it worse. So the sheer act of releasing something to appease fans, which just gave them more content, was copacetic. It was, oh, they did what they answered, the cries of the audience, and that's what they did. And the majority were happy because they didn't bother to think about it. They, oh, we just got, we got more stuff. We got to say goodbye to Caden and, and all of our loved ones, and that was great. When in reality, the plot was actually made worse. The exposition was made worse. Uh, it's kind of that sad concept of, well, we could fix it, but we have to do the same thing we've done before. We'll just add more stuff to it, which just pretty much adds to the problem. But people didn't see it as such because they weren't paying attention or didn't care to pay attention. And that's typical. I don't care. I, I interpreted it as best as I could a long time ago. And now we have a very similar problem. Uh, not uh, the content itself, because we don't know what the Snyder Cut is going to involve but the response from the critics, the bloggers, and those who review movies. So cries of artistic integrity aren't really here, but it's pretty much the same argument combined with um, social media outcries and misogyny and other such things that these people think is what the Snyder Cut's all about. So we're looking at Vulture, we're looking at Collider, and... We are looking at Screen Rant. Here's these three wonderful posts just to see how these people responded to the Snyder Cut. This one's from Abraham Riesman from Vulture. What hath the Snyder Cut released? In retrospect, it was inevitable. It's like Brexit or Donald Trump's clinching of the presidency. First you hear that it happened, then even if you wanted it to happen, you're shocked. These people aren't supposed to be calling the shots. <laughs> Yes, the American people who voted for their president. Yep. Nope. They shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> They're de déclassé outsiders, drunk on atavistic rage, okay, and viciously abusive toward their foes. Such people are destined to be at the fringe, not the hub of power. So here we go. This person has classified those who are akin to liking and wanting the Snyder Cut to be voters for Donald Trump and they shouldn't be calling the shots. The voting public should not be allowed to demand things they want from a company who gives them what they want, in this case, entertainment. Yep, how dare those right-leaning people <laughs> wanting a better thing of the mediocre to crap version they got. How dare they request something more, something better. Great way to start your uh, your blog post out there, Abraham. There's all kinds of delicious things in here I'm going to skip because it's just painful. Uh, this reason, the reason this conflagra conflagration has burned so bright is that it came at an infection point in a massive culture war and geekdom. Really? The release of Justice League? and people wanting a better Justice League movie, uh, go to any comic book movie or any movie, any piece of media that sucked, and go, yeah, this needs to be redone. Throughout the early 2010s, nerdy products ranging from video games and comic books to, yes, movies, started to evince a greater degree of inclusion for marginalized identities, both in the content and behind the scenes. I'm not too sure what this guy thinks video games or other media should involve, but I don't know what inclusion has anything to do with the Snyder Cut or how such an environment caused the Snyder Cut or Josh Whedon's version of Justice League to come about. That's a bit strange. I don't know how he's putting identity politics into that, but hey... Welcome to bloggers, blogging about media. Its backers saw themselves not just as demanding access to a work they wanted to see. Oh, how dare people demand things they want. 
But as soldiers on the front lines of the battle against Disney owned Marvel's predominance and approach, as well as all the ideas those things entail. Uh, maybe. I mean, people were comparing DC to Marvel at the time. They went, wow, Marvel knows what they're doing. What's wrong with DC? And then DC tried to lighten up their stories, I guess. I guess. It's difficult to prove anything about a decentralized movement in the ephemeral world of digital media, but geek writers can confidently report to you that many of the Snatter Cut advocates are the same sort of people who call out entertainment firms for forced diversity and capitulating to the social justice warriors. Well, you know, uh, Abraham, if you just look at comics for like one second for the past 10 years, you kind of see the, the writing on the wall, literally. Sometimes the, wor- out, the, the, the artwork and the pages too, and the dialogue and the character designs and the absolute shit artwork. Marvel does a lot of it. I haven't been looking at DC lately, so I don't know, but it's possible. Especially when you have Gotham High and hiring a person who doesn't even, who has never read or watched Batman and wanted to take an, a Hong Kong Asian spin because she's from Hong Kong. You know something's wrong with comic book dumb if that's, that's what's happening. If you attack a multi-billion dollar corporation often enough and make it clear that you'll harass it. How are you, how do you attack a multi-billion dollar corporation? What are we like Xanatos from Gargoyles? We're like attacking our uh, competitor. Like what's, what, what do we do? You know how we attack a multi-billion dollar corporation? We don't buy their stuff. Saying stuff on social media isn't going to change their mind. Okay. doesn't work that way. You can try. I don't think you're going to get very far. Maybe because everyone is indoors these days. That's the only messages they're getting. They're thinking, oh, we should probably make some money now that we're not working as hard. Yeah, what do the people want? Oh, the Snyder Cut. Oh, yeah, I've heard about that. We can, we can throw a few million dollars together to put that. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Huh. And make it clear you'll harass anyone who stands in your way that corporations will eventually give up and throw you what you want. In fact, Warner Brothers has, in its way, institutionalized this kind of behavior. Yes, they've they've institutionalized hatred. Of course they have, by building an institution called Twitter. And everyone just jumps on Twitter or or Tumblr or whatever. If you want to really see what happens to those people, go to Tumblr. That's the exact opposite of what this person's talking about. You'll see plenty of people on the other side of the spectrum saying exactly the opposite thing and dubbed it enthusiasm rather than abuse, whether they meant to or not. It's hard to escape the feeling that Warner Brothers has unleashed something beyond their control. What have they, what have they done? They, they released a mediocre to bad movie, and people want, said, wait, where's, where's the good movie? Oh, wait, Snyder had one? What happened to Snyder? Oh, he got called away. Oh, they changed the script. Well, we want the Snyder f- film now. That's all. That's all that happened. It's been going on for years. People want something they, they like. Well, I don't see what's wrong with that. I'm, again, I'm not a fan of these shows. I, I'm, not, I'm not rooting for the Snyder Cut to come out or not. I'm glad it's happening for people to get what they want. But I have no stakes in this. I'm just <laughs> listening and going, okay, it probably won't be as good as you think, but it probably will be better than what you got. If they're spending this much time and money on it. Uh, but who am I kidding? It's far more likely that... This will be an enormous step backward for the stuff of our public dreams. Uh, I don't see why. If, if the public are literally asking for this one thing, like Final Fantasy VII Remake, which took decades to come out, it finally came out, and it's not the full product, and they're still going to ask for the rest of it, and they still want more, even though there were some huge problems with it. What's wrong with that? It took them that long to come out, but hey, Movies are a bit faster to make. That's because, in essence, the release of the Snyder Cut was also inevitable due to the fact that it reinforces the power structures that dominate and brutalize the world these days. Oh yeah, the the power structures of America, North Korea, Iran, parts of the EU. What the hell are you talking about? It's entertainment, you doofus. The power structure of what? Twitter? Yeah, a lot of clout in Twitter. 
Sure, release the Snyder Cut has a lot of grassroots support. Yeah, can't have grassroots support. But so does the movement to end quarantine restrictions. Oh dear, can't have can't have quarantine restrict. Can't get out of quarantine. Yep, everyone stay at home. Gotta stay at home, guys. And in both cases, the proponents are ultimately just pushing for a return to the way things used to be, and the validation. Huh, the way things used to be sounds like a conservative metaphor, doesn't it? If you'll forgive my naked identity politics, and no offense to Snyder, a straight cis and white man. Gee, I wonder what side of the aisle this guy is from. Maybe our nightmarish society will finally collapse before the Snyder Cut can see the light of day. Oh dear, let's watch the world burn before the people get a frickin' movie. What a lunatic. That was Abraham Reisman from Vulture. What a great blog. I suggest everyone check out Vulture, say hello, enjoy the fine articles, leave some nice comments, you know, that sort of thing. Be nice, clean your ice, yada, yada. And here we have Collider. Why releasing the Justice League Snyder Cut sets a dangerous precedent. Yes, of people getting what they want. What a horrible, horrible precedent. As Snyder eventually began stoking the movement, so too did several stars of the film, including Ben Affleck, Jason Momoa, Henry Cavill, Gal Gadot. It seemed like a profound waste of everyone's time and further evidence that only the only tool in this movement's arsenal was aggressive, unpleasant forcefulness. Yes, aggressive, unpleasant forcefulness from the actors of the show and the maker of the original film. How, how dare they voice their opinion in an aggressive way? <laughs> how dare you, Gal Gadot, for demanding better quality films <laughs> that you yourself star in? <laughs> Damn you, Hollywood. For as long as the movement has raged, Warner Brothers has done the right thing and simply ignored them. Oh, there you go. Warner Brothers not making money. <laughs> the internet already gave them a voice when they shouldn't have had one. How dare the internet give people, how, they, how dare it give minorities a voice? What the hell is wrong with the internet? What are you thinking? Getting people angry over a movie? How dare you allow them to communicate the, their emotions? and thoughts, and feelings. Can't, can't movies just be purely logical and be completely plot-centric and have no characterization, just be completely plot point one, plot point two, denouement, go get your in your car and go home and, and wait for the next movie? Why can't everything be like that? Yesterday, the studio gave them something they never expected but always craved, legitimacy, and now we're screwed. We are... The, Humanity is screwed, guys. We, it just, it's over. We can't, you can't even go on the internet anymore. You may as well just, just die. Life as you know it is over. Fans displayed by perceived slights will now be unsufferable. Okay. Maybe to this person's Twitter feed, but that's about it. Justice League is a corporate product, one designed to sell. Happy meals and bed sheets and pave the way for additional equally unambitious product maybe i mean that's one way of looking at it i don't really care but maybe that's a good thing in comparison to the marvel machine that makes all kinds of movies and, and paraphernalia snyder agreed to provide something and didn't follow through well yes it wasn't his fault he got called away personal tragedy and then someone else took the reins now warner brothers is going back on its commitment and instead how is it going back in its commitment? It's just doing a second version of it. And instead of just giving fans something, it's unclear how if it will be a movie or a miniseries. Warner Brothers has been bullied, worst of all. Okay, so is it a corporate product or or is the corporation bad? Like what's So the corporation's good, but they're making a corporate product or I what? has been bullied, worst of all, not that their behavior regarding Snyder's dismissal was all that admirable. Okay, so this person doesn't like Warner Brothers. All right. And they have responded in kind. Here, just have it. Now leave me alone. But bullies are never done. They'll be back and we'll all have to pay for it. Okay, so apparently because the bullies, people who use a hashtag, who want a product, are getting it in some version or another, 
will never shut up. It's like, well, they're the, they're the audience. They want stuff. That's why companies exist, to give people stuff and services. How are they bullies? How is using a, a Twitter hashtag making you a bully? You could say the same argument with Gamergate. How is using the Gamergate hashtag make you a bully? Obviously, if you say stupid things, but saying, hey, I want the Snyder Cut. I want, I want more Wonder Woman. I want more Green Lantern. And if Warner Brothers says, hey, we can make some money here, let's do it. What's the problem? So a little, little strange take there, uh, Drew Taylor from uh, Collider. What a, what a wonderful website Collider is, always having the, the voice of the people present, always worried about their corporate masters, making sure they're not shills and they're actually talking about quality products. Good, good to know you got our back there, Collider. And here we have Screen Rant. Justice League Zack Snyder cuts, sets a bad precedent. That's by Thomas Bacon. Okay, Thomas, let's see what you have to say. For all that's the case, though, the Justice League Snyder cut marks a subtle shift in the balance of power between studios and the fan base. And that may not be a good thing going forward. Pretty much the same message as before. Sets a precedent. There's some sort of power struggle. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. But I'd rather have the power struggle be from the people saying, hey, I want X. And the, the business going, oh, we should probably give them X. That, that might be work. Yeah, it might be a good idea. Let's make some money, guys. So, yeah, same old crap. All this means HBO Max is inadvertently sending a simple message, fan pressure works. Yeah, it should. Of course it should. Your clients are number one. The customer is always right. They want X, they should get X. The most vocal, well-organized, and high-profile fan campaign of all time has successfully achieved its goal. Of course, the reasons are unique, and no doubt the decision makers would insist they haven't set a precedent at all. But the most toxic fans won't see it that way. Again, it's like, oh, the fans are just getting what they want. They're going to keep repeating themselves. Oh, God, it's going to be a never-ending cacophony of desire and, and corporate want of products they, they actually desire. <laughs> like, whoa, what, what are the chances of this happening? Over the years, many people, critics especially, were targets of online harassment and hate. Uh, all on Twitter, I bet, with some receiving threats as well. You know what? Don't use Twitter. Problem solved. It's that easy. And if you're a public fig figure with a, a opinion column or a pundit or whatever you do online, you're going to have to get used to it. That's, that's online behavior. People are going to speak back to you and they're not going to agree with you. Freedom of speech. It's very straightforward. By releasing the Snyder Cut through one lens, it could be seen as the studio condoning or at least accepting that part of the fandom, which shouldn't be the case. Really? Because... If I was smart, I was a multi-billion dollar company or what have you, and I wanted to make products, I would want to give the people what they wanted. I'd want to know exactly what they wanted, and I'd just give it to them. Pretty straightforward. That would, that would be the best way. The internet would be my, my saving grace. What do I make? What should I invest money in? What should I gamble with? Oh, wait, someone wants X. How many people? Millions of people? Well then, let's make X. Great idea. Glad we had this conversation, people. Easy peasy. Rather, it is the bullies and misogynists. Here we go. The misogynist angle. It's always bullies and then misogynists and the sexists and the racists and all these other things. The people who tore the fan base apart and who gave DC fans a bad name who will believe themselves vindicated. I'm quite sure the critics, not the fans, but the critics of Justice League gave it a bad rap. I'm quite sure about that. The fans actually gave it a higher rating in the 70s on Rotten Tomatoes. So maybe you might have your facts wrong here, buddy. The Snyder Cut may well be cathartic. It is sure to it is sure to it is sure to a dramatic improvement over the Frankenstein's monster that released in 2017. But it also sets a very bad Bad precedent for Hollywood. So this person's admitting, hey, you know what? It might be good for everyone. It might even be a better product. 
but the precedent of people asking for things, that's bad. Okay. <laughs> More artistic integrity, huh? Well, that's, from, that's three bloggers from uh, three websites, all released yesterday, May the 21st. It, it's just like, wow, what, what are the chances of all these critics being corporate shills and saying, nope, it's bad that fans are calling the shots, when in fact, every fan calls the shots whenever you spend money on any product of entertainment. So I think these people have it backwards, and uh, they just don't understand the point of media. And I think it would be interesting to see fan reactions to how new products could be made, like people demanding uh, new IPs or IPs that haven't been made into movies or video games yet. That would be a great way. That's a normal way of doing research on products for these companies, what to come out with next. So maybe the fact that they don't like things being redone, which is bizarre because you have Star Trek being redone, you have Star Wars being sequelized, you have uh, Battlestar Galactica, like all these science fiction franchises being redone. But you can't redo the thing that's just redone or have a second take at it, even though people are demanding it. I don't know why. I see nothing wrong with that. Continuity, lore, and and what is the real canon is going to be tough to answer, but who cares? That's another problem. And that's a whole other universe of discussion. Anyway, thought you guys might want a second take of me uh, looking at the Snyder Cut. Thanks for listening. Have yourself a great day.